Joining us here in advance of, my gosh, the 33rd season finale of America's Funniest Home Videos airing this Sunday at 7 Eastern on ABC, the great Alfonso Ribeiro back here on the Rich Eisen Show. How you doing, Alfonso? I'm good, buddy. It's so good to see you. Right back at you. Yeah, I right? love coming here and hanging out with you, you. And, you know, we, we've seen you a little bit at the we club. Have. But, uh, we have. But I love, I love coming and talking, you know, talking, talking the good stuff. You talking know, the good stuff. I'm, I'm just saying I'm, I'm always going to be, you, you know, got- rocking my... My team colors. Uh, your Lakers. My Lakers. Socks. Yes. Very good. Got my Lakers socks on. We, we, we've all, you know, been with our kids. and Yeah. Um, at least some of us uh, been on the business end of the old, uh, what's yes. the word for it? Nut tap? Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. That's one. Yes, the- uh, and then... And then these two kids play <laughs> on one of those rims that's just hanging on a wall, and mm-hmm. and they one one breaks the actual wall, and the yeah. other one uses the opportunity to still score two points. That's, I, mean, I yeah, see my kids, yes, in that <laughs> video because my boys would absolutely do that. My <laughs> oldest son would slam my little guy into the wall yes. and then dunk on his head. <laughs> Who cares about the wall? Daddy will figure it out later, but I must get these two points. Unbelievable. It is, it, it's so great, and, and you can watch episodes on demand and on Hulu the following day. Uh, Hulu, of course, available right here on Roku. Alfonso Ribeiro here on the program. Let's just jump into it and talk a little bit more uh, AFV shortly. Um, how's your golf game? How well, you know, it was really bad for a long time. I I lost Come it. On I, now. Well, Come on now. you know, I was saying this to to your producers, but like I I have a simulator at the house, God which bless. is the greatest tool that you can have for golf. It is awesome. Yes. I come except, over at like three o'clock today. Except when you have my mind, <laughs> well, right? Because it's because too... I like to tinker. Mm-hmm. I'm constantly trying to. Ooh, I could do this and do that. And I literally tinkered my way out of a golf swing. And then I started looking at some videos of my coach and I and went back to the old swing that I'd stopped tinkering with. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it came together, you know, because I was shooting in the 80s, right? Mm -hmm. I shoot 77. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday I shoot 70. And it just all came back. It all finally, like, it was kind of probably all that tinkering that I did gave me more knowledge. Yes. But going back to what works for me is absolutely working. So I'm excited about the American Century this year up in Lake Tahoe. Yes. Because if this is just the beginning of getting it back, oof, we don't know. We're, we don't know. How stable, we don't know what could happen. How stable is the stable foot? <laughs> hey. how, how, how are we stable for? I mean, there? with I the mean, stable foot, I'm gonna put up 20, 25 points a day if I you. keep doing this. I'm oh, just saying. Are you really? I mean, it's you're po- feeling it. I, I mean, feel you have like, to speak. You have to speak things into existence. And I, you know what? I I say that to my my I I coach my kids baseball teams. Yes. And I literally used that the other day you in did. a game. I was like. Are we going to have fun today? Yeah. Are we going to play well today? Are we going to make some base hits? Are we going to get some outs? So I was like, yes. Now everybody say it after me. And they said the whole thing after me. I was like, now you've already put it in existence. There you go. It's already there. Did now you just got to just live it. Did you win? And they lost horribly. <laughs> <laughs> it was just. <laughs> but they, but, but that's but, baseball, but man. They, but was, they had a good time. I was telling. <laughs> I, I was talking about this after, you know, uh, uh, an unfortunate Little League result for my, for my uh, young his son the other day um that hey you know so many of these kids get down on themselves so hard it's just like the baseball hall of fame Mm -hmm. the hall of fame yes is filled with people who made outs seven out of every 10 times absolutely that's baseball that is baseball you it's hard to get a kid especially my own kid yes to to get that but it's like you realize that the greatest of all of them, yes, are all losers. Yeah, right. Like of I mean, course. you know, they're not losers, right? But like, no, but yes. they lose more than they've won, more than they win, and those are the best at the plate. You are, you are. If you're doing your job to the best, best. of maybe ever, yes, you are reaching base due to you contacting a baseball, right? Three and a half times out of ten, and that's huge numbers, right? It's right? tough to teach that to yeah, a kid. Yeah, it's it is. It is. But like but the you know, at little league it's did you have fun, right? Mm-hmm. 
they were, we were also playing the best team in the league, mm -hmm. right? So, like, coming in, we all knew what was going to happen in this game, <laughs> right? Like, this team, so you, gotta speak you it know, into existence. But, I, but what I wanted them to feel was, hey, let's have some fun. Let's just enjoy this game. We know who they are. We oh, know yeah. how good they are. Let's just play and we'll figure it out. You know, that's the, the unfortunate reality of Little League is typically the commissioner's team mm -hmm. is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, there's but, something. Uh, Bud Seelig tried that many you years. No, hey. I don't know. But in Little League, right. the commissioner's team is always going to be pretty good. They've. They've kind of seen every kid who's come through, yes. and then all of a sudden, you know, the worst kid on that team is, you know, playing in, in the infield, you know, in the starting lineup on most other teams. Alfonso Ribeiro here on the Rich Eisen <laughs> Show. The internet also undefeated. Uh, what did uh, what did this gentleman finish last year? In, uh, uh, in T18 last year uh, with T18. Del Curry and Vinny Del Negro. The T18 is a, a heck of a finish. It wasn't that, bad. The, 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 you What's know, your top finish? Is that not your top uh, finish? My top finish, I think, is like 11th. Okay. So uh, my goal this year is top 10. Who's 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 the, the, the person you've played with where you're like, that was a blast? Like, who's the one that's the biggest blast that you've well, played I, with? To be honest, I love all the guys. I, I mean, know that. I, I, I really do. That. I really do. Um, you know, I've played with Vinny Del Negro. I love playing with Vinny. Uh, Sterling Sharp. Oh, is truly amazing. by the way how far does he hit the golf ball uh, i've played are, with him before we're really close dude we're really close into actually Throw i think sterling would say that if we both hit yes our biggest drives i would get him that is by the way I, you and i have never played before right that is incredibly impressive you know my, my I, i've never seen it. he he hits the, a golf ball really far i hit one on saturday 340 Okay. So like look at you. Like You're I can back. You're back. I can absolutely crush it. The problem is is that once I crush one, mm -hmm. now I'm swinging to crush every. Oh, <laughs> and uh that doesn't typically on, do well for know. straight. You should <laughs> <laughs> just, just saying, ooh, that one timed up great. Okay. Watch me hit this one. Okay. <laughs> and and then it goes all wrong. But now I mean yeah. distance has never been the problem. It's always you know, controlling the ball, right? Mm -hmm. And and I've now figured out how to control the ball again, and so we'll see. But but yeah, I would say with Sterling and I, um, he would probably say that if we both hit our biggest, I would get it. But I love playing with Sterling. He's incredible. I, I, he is. He makes you smile. I played with him at the Hilton Grand Vacations mm -hmm. uh, Tournament of Champions down in in Orlando at the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. and we just had. It's just so much fun. I mean, I've never played with anybody who plays faster. Oh, he does play he fast, huh? Not even takes him. a second. If you accidentally start talking while he's walking to his ball, he's probably going to hit it before you finish the sentence. <laughs> I love playing play uh, playing golf with guys like that. I mean, I'm it, very happy with and, pace of play like and that. And you can you can talk all you want. He don't hear anything. It's perfect. He's great. I love playing with Sterling. He, I love playing. I uh, I was. Uh, in a tournament in Dallas, and I had a great time playing with with Mark Mulder, and uh, I played with Albert Pujols, which was pretty oh awesome. Oh my goodness! Uh, How far really is great he? Dude. How he far does he? Smashes it! Yeah, he, got... he smashes it! Um, about once again, say. he don't know where it's going that much yet. Okay, but you can see. Right. But I mean, he has. I mean, he just retired, he just right? Retired. So it's not. Yes. He hasn't really done yes. a lot of uh, you know work on it yet. But you can see that he's put in the work. He's 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 smashing it. But those those are two guys I, I enjoy playing with the the last tournament. But I really do. I really it's like I, I say to Mike Milthorpe, who's the tournament director, mm -hmm. I don't care who you put me with. I'm right. gonna enjoy my time with everybody. Yeah. Because it's you know golf is unfortunately a singular game. Yes, sir. When you're really competing, yes. so it doesn't matter who you're playing with. You're just out there, you and the course doing your job. It's you know? PGA Tour. It's PGA Championship, Championship. Week. Yes, uh, Rory's home course, and as a member, yeah, that's yeah. gotta be helpful. One would say it's He's struggling right now. You know, he is he is struggling right now. It's weird because I played golf with him back in December. Mm -hmm. I was playing at an Omega Watch. It gave me this watch. Very nice. Um, um, an Omega Watch event in Florida, and he's a an Omega ambassador, and we got a chance to play together. And I and I tell you, that was probably the most amazing experience I've ever had on a golf bet. course. Watching Rory hit a ball all day was unbelievable. What'd you learn? What'd you pick up? Anything? 
what I learned was exactly what I went back to. Okay. Right. This was probably the, what got me on that on that uh, on that train of thought. His swing is the most efficient swing I've ever watched. There is no extra movement or energy in his swing when he's hitting it full out. It looks like he's chipping. Except the ball happen? goes 340. <laughs> How does first that hole, even happen? First hole at this go- at this golf course, right? is a slight dog leg left. And so we all hit, all of us amateurs hit it out over here, right? And he gave me a compliment first swing. He was like, ooh, I see a lot of speed here. I was like, thank you, man. Um, <laughs> and so he, he hits one out there, except he gets up and he aims over there. And I'm like, where, where he going? Mm-hmm. Like, why is he aiming that way? Mm-hmm. Oh, he's probably gonna hit a big old cut or something. I was like, but he likes to draw, that's weird. And he smashes it. But it never looks like he's swinging hard. We were just kind of like, huh, kind of hit it well, but it was really solid. But, I mean, he didn't really put any extra into that. And now we're driving around looking for his ball. Like, where's, where's, we drive up onto the green because he flew it 356 onto the green and almost killed Michelle Wee. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle wow. standing at the green like, really? <laughs> really? And it's like he flew it. And landed it on the front edge of the green. Now let's be and, let's be honest here. When when you hit your ball and yes. you saw him hit his, right? Did you think and you didn't see it anywhere in the fairway? Did you think you got him? Did you think you got him off the tee? Well, I was like, I know that my ball mm. is where we supposed to hit it. <laughs> 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 I hit it where we're supposed to hit it. You went ahead and put it in the trees somewhere. Yeah. And then you drive up, you're like, okay, that's wrong. That's wrong. Okay, but this is going to be fun. The The other side of it that was great was I all day long I said, I just want to be within 40 yards of him all day. Yes, sir. That's all I wanted. Makes sense. And so all day long I was like, you know, walking off, you know, my drive to his, right? And I, I was inside of 40 all day, most of the time around 25 to 30. Um, and then I just wanted the because it was a scramble, it was a shamble. And I wanted to have them use my ball twice. I was like, I just want just two. Mm-hmm. And so we used my ball on the 16th. And I'm like, wow, that means I only got two more chances <laughs> at possibly having my second one used. We get to 18, right? Yes. And I hit a beautiful drive right down the middle. Atta boy. And he takes out an iron. <laughs> And I'm like, <laughs> is he giving me this? Like, yeah. I felt kind of like that's really the greatest host move in yes. history. Like, he takes out an iron and he hits it the exact same distance as my driver, except it was in the rough. So we chose mine. Hey. Right? Hey. All right. All we right. chose Look mine. I got us. my two. It's a miracle. But as we drive down there, he goes, wait a minute. I could have flew. I could have flown the water. It's like whatever, dude. <laughs> 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 whatever, dude. Really, really. You just. Get, I mean, you took out an iron and you almost beat me. And now you, you know, oh. you probably could have flown the water because it was water. It was you know a little yeah. water. What a you know, story. and going across the fairway. But yeah, but I mean, just so incredible to watch. It's 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 weird how you know and. You know, we all experience this. Everybody who plays golf experiences the reality that yeah. you can be amazing at golf for six months. And one moment can happen and literally you're like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. And there's no rhyme or reason. It makes no sense. I mean, he's Rory McElroy, and he looks slightly lost on the golf course hitting the ball. It's so weird. Alfonso Ribeiro here on the Rich Eisen Show. If I had told you when you were on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air that you'd be the host of America's Funniest Home Videos one day, what would you have told me? I would have said that's never going to be possible. One, by the time I would be in the position to ever be in this show, it won't be around. Right. Right. Yes. And right. it's America's Funniest Home Videos. They're not hiring me to be the host. Saget at the time, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean when, that, when that show started, it was, you know, 28 million 
35 million viewers per episode. Huge. Right? I mean, huge. different time well, in television, I mean, still right? Huge. But, uh, yeah, I know. Different but, time in But TV. amazing what those numbers were. And, you know, I just never would have thought. And, and I feel so lucky, so blessed yeah. that uh, this opportunity happened. And things happen for a reason. You just never know. And, you know, things line up, right? And in this situation, right, it just so happened that Tom Bergeron was walking away from AFE mm -hmm. the year that I was on Dancing with the Stars. We became friendly. He's going to the network and the studio saying, hey, I think Alfonso would be the guy to replace me. Yeah. And and everybody agrees. Right? Like that those stories don't happen to me in Hollywood. Well, it right? Did, man. And it did. And it's... I feel so blessed that I had that that I've had that opportunity. And now, you know, being the main MC host on Dancing with the Stars. That's right. That's you know, right. I mean, course, essentially, yeah. you know, it's like uh, Tom and I joke all the time. It's like, dude, what's your next show? <laughs> I'm like, I need, Tom, I need to know what your next show is because I need to know what show I'm trying to get, right? I got to, I can't. He, and so he jokes all the time. Oh, He's like, Alfonso, I'm not taking a job yet. I, I'm not sure where your career is going to go funny. after this. But as soon as I do one, I'll know that you're coming. <laughs> how how old were you when you first started on Fresh Prince? Fresh Prince, I was eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah, I was eighteen. The character I think was uh, was fifteen or sixteen. Um, and Jeez. Um, long, when you see, because uh, look, I, I'm 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 twenty seven years removed from my first Sports Center, and whenever they pop up on Twitter, right, I think it's a different human. Like it's a. Do well, you think that when you look when you see Fresh Prince pop up? Like completely, I have no recollection. Come on, really? Yeah, like very little memory of that time, right? Just because, I mean, you know, it, it it's over thirty years ago, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and it's it's a it's like a different human being to me. It's just that's a different person. It's not me. It's not Look at you know. Picture. It's 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 certainly not this guy today, right? Um, the ones that truly get me is, you know, if I look at anything with like tap dance kid, sure. Right. Or Pepsi commercial, Michael Jackson, right. Silver spoons. Those are the ones that's like, that's cause I was a kid that happened. Right. But it happened. <laughs> yeah. Right. It was cool. Right. I, I, every once in a while I'll pull up a video of, you know, I'll show, you know, my kids or other kids or whatever. And I'll show, there's a video of me at Lincoln center mm -hmm. with Michael Jackson. And the story that I tell, which is always very funny, is right before he walked out on stage, yes, he went to the bathroom and accidentally dropped his sequin glove in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come on, don't, no, true story. Drop it in the toilet. He's freaking out. Is it the only one? It's the one. Wow, <laughs> it's the glove, right? He's got one glove. He didn't come with multiple. He didn't have a suitcase, right, of gloves. He had the glove. He dropped it in the toilet. It, like, he must have taken it off, put it on the sink or something, and it fell in the toilet. He's freaking out, and, like, finally he realized, wait a minute, he reaches in, grabs his glove. And the rest of us are like, but he dropped the glove, and what you going to do with the glove, bro? Right? And so we have to go out on stage, and he has a soaking wet sequin glove on. From the toilet. From the toilet. Of Lincoln Center. At Lincoln Center. By the way, Lincoln a... Center, toilet water, By on the, the glove. This is the first time I'm ever telling this story on wow. TV. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is a Rich Eisen I appreciate first, it. Thank right you. here. Well, you... <laughs> one would have to think, though, I mean, of any toilet water, Lincoln Center's got to be I mean, your top-notch toilet The question water. to me was whether he flushed it first. <laughs> that was my question. <laughs> right? Did he was he, able to did flush, he flush first? And then pull, <laughs> flush or did he pull, pull then flush? Uh, I think that's a huge difference. A there is a huge yeah, difference a there. A pull and flush is much better than a, a flush and pull. No, you want to flush and pull. So you want Get to all the first. dirty water away. The new clean water kind of cleans it off oh, a little bit, okay. and then you pull the glove out, yeah, right? exactly. Come, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean... Was he in the frame of mind to think that way, though? I don't know. All I'm thinking is his one secret glove, out. and it's in the freaking <laughs> toilet. Personally, I think he grabbed and, pl and plucked. That's what I think <laughs> happened. And I think he went out on stage with a McNasty glove on, <laughs> and the rest of us were trying to figure out what we were going to do because I wasn't shaking that man's hand. 
Not oh that day. Oh my God. Yes, God. I will be a meme after this. All right, one, <laughs> la, la, last one. Is, the, is there a story behind the Carlton dance? At all? Um, it's, I mean, there's very little story there. I mean, the, the, the story ultimately was that uh, the first time I read it in a script, it simply said Carlton dances. Yes. And, you know, when you're in the first season of any show, everything that is written in a script is new, yes. right? So everything you've got to create what that is, right? Uh -huh. So does he sing well? Does he dance well? Does he, does he play sports well, right? All of this, you're crafting it as you go. Yes. Um, and I had actually, like, made fun of this dance, like, before the show had started, like, going to, like, little like lounges and stuff and I would I would like mess around because the the dance was the inspiration for that dance was Eddie Murphy's white man dance right in yeah. his I think it's the raw video right and then it's Courtney Cox From on the dancing, dancing in the dark, dark video with Bruce Springsteen where he brings her up on stage and she does the white man dance well I was like okay I think this character would absolutely do the white man dance, <laughs> but he would do it differently. And I had messed around with it. And so when in the script it said Carlton dances and we're getting, we get on stage and we're just kind of, you know, seeing what it is. And I'm like, I'm thinking this. Yes. And I show everybody and <laughs> that was it. They were like, That's they were it. like, you're not doing it. We don't need to see anything else. You're doing that. Sold. Sold. You've got the Carlton dance for the rest of your life. <laughs> you didn't know what you just created, but you will never walk down the street again without someone yelling, do the dance. <laughs> We're not going to do that. We're not going to ask. We're not that. doing that. I just, that. I just yeah, was yeah, wondering yeah, if there yeah. was a story. Yeah, no, no, no. That's, that's, that's really the story. But Fantastic. I had like, I had already messed around with it. I'd like, you know, it wasn't like it just fully just was on that moment came up with it. I'd like, yeah. you know, because I loved Eddie Murphy and I and I remembered the video and I'd like, you know, I remember at one point I was in like a lobby bar somewhere uh -huh. and I was watching these two white guys literally do the dance. <laughs> and I was like, that is hysterical. <laughs> and 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 I was and now and then I go out on the dance floor and I'm making fun of them with their dance, <laughs> doing it. And I'm like, oh, this is you know, one day in my mind I'm like, one day I'll get to make fun of somebody again. Except it was making fun of myself and, and, and the character. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Alfonso, Ribeiro, you are the best, man. Let's do this more on the regular. Yes. Anytime you're up for it. America's Funniest Home Videos season finale of the 33rd season. Come on. It's your eighth season hosting this iconic program. 7 p.m. on ABC. You can watch episodes on demand and on Hulu the following day right here on Roku. Let's tee it up at some point. Absolutely, in time. brother. That's Alfonso Ribeiro here on The Rich Eisen Show. Catch The Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.